This is part three of a three-part series of our tour of the Vermont countryside with the help of endtoend.com. Quick recap, we found this ride in a tour book and thought it sounded pretty good, so we packed up our bikes and traveled to Brandon, Vermont. From there, we cycled to Shoreham, then on to Middlebury. Today's video will focus on our time in Middlebury and our last ride back to where we started in Brandon. Our last bed and breakfast was at a place called the Swift House Inn. Now of the three places we stayed at, this had the most corporate feel, for lack of a better word. I mean, they had a check-in desk, a lot of staff, um, it was a bigger property, um, all the rooms had been refurbished and were much more modern than what the pictures uh, depicted on their website. Now that said, this was the only place that didn't serve dinner, so we had to go out into town and find our own. Now, you know, we found some pizza, which was great, not very creative, but we were really in the mood for it after a couple days of uh, long rides. So like all the other locations, Swift House had a place for our e-bikes. They had an outdoor garage uh, that we could store the bikes in overnight, and it had electrical outlets that allowed us to plug our bikes in and recharge our batteries, which was great. So if you have an e-bike, you don't have to worry about where you're going to get this thing charged at all on this kind of trip. For breakfast the next day, we had your typical um, buffet. You know, nothing fancy, but it was really quite delicious. The coffee was great, and they were served in these really cool mugs, so I decided to buy one for myself. After breakfast, we went back up to our room and put on our bike gear and packed up. We took our luggage back down to the main lobby, which is where South Hopkins, the coordinator of End to End, would pick it up and take it back to the Inn on Park Street in Brandon, which is where we started. Um, so after we were all ready, we got our bikes and we were ready to head out. Okay, so we're starting day three of our, of our Vermont tour. We are currently in Middlebury. We're gonna ride back to Brandon where our car is waiting for us. And uh, once we get there, we're going to drive on out to Niagara Falls. So we got a lot of biking and driving in front of us today. But only 29 miles today. Only 29 miles today. So our shortest ride, but uh, we got a lot of driving. So we'll see you later. Bye. Our last ride was going to be 30 miles. This one primarily took us south and east and was hilly and, for lack of a better word, kind of woodsy. We saw a lot more trees and forest than we did uh, the previous two days. The traffic continued to give us plenty of space, minus one incident, which hopefully shows up on the screen here. The uh, one guy in the middle kind of cut it a little close, but, you know, that happens. So as we continued south, we eventually started moving towards this place called Lake Dunmore. It was this big, gigantic lake uh, in the middle of some woods, and it was clearly a um, vacation spot because I saw a lot of homes that people might vacation in. Uh, there's lots of beaches where people could go and visit for the day. It was really quite pleasant. The scenery was very beautiful, and what was even better was that we had a tailwind through most of this trip on the last day, so that made the last ride very easy to navigate. So as we moved south beyond the lake, we knew we were getting close to Brandon. So it was a little bittersweet feeling, you know, we really enjoyed our time on this ride, but at the same time, we were looking forward to being finished. The, uh, the trip was great, and we really enjoyed our time. We arrived in Brandon from the east, and when we got into town, we decided to take a quick stop at the town square again for some pictures. And when we were finished with that, we rode back to the Inn on Park Street, which is where we found our luggage waiting for us, and our car was still there. We loaded up our luggage, put our bikes on, and uh, changed into some driving clothes. And it took about a half an hour to get kind of all settled and ready for our drive back to St. Louis. So this might be a good time to take a look at some of the gear we had on this ride. We both rode specialized turbo Carrios, e-bikes with about 80 to 120 miles of range. We carried the Axiom Ocean Weave trunk on an Axiom pannier mount where we could store food, medical kits, cameras, and other incidentals. Our two favorite pieces of kit included the Senna Pi, which is an intercom headset that allowed us to communicate without having to shout at each other and the Garmin Varia, a device that doubles as a light 
and as sort of a radar gun that would notify us on our head units that a car was approaching, as well as how fast and how many were back there. As we pulled out of town, we both agreed that this trip was more than we had hoped for. Great rides, friendly people, safe roads. It was a great experience. We decided to extend our trip one day by going into Niagara Falls to check that whole scene out. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description so you can check it out if that's something you're interested in. To wrap things up, if you're looking for a cycling trip for this spring, summer, or fall, I can't recommend Vermont enough, especially through this end to end organization. They were attentive, the prices were fair, the lodging was good, and they're extremely thorough. So on that note, I, I hope you've enjoyed this three-part series. I'll include links to the other two parts at the end of this video, as well as a bonus link to the Niagara Falls trip. Um, so on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.